Thank you, Madam Secretary. Thank you, uh, the Senator and uh, uh, Mr. President, uh, to Council Member and Deputy Mayor, and to all of the distinguished guests, everybody that's here. Thank you for the privilege and opportunity to update you on where we have been, where we're going as it relates to the room key and home key model. And I say room key with some intention. Uh, two driving forces in life, inspiration, desperation. Uh, inspired, certainly the beginning of my term to address the issue of homelessness and housing with some renewed vigor and energy, uh, immediately was confronted with the crisis of a pandemic. And out of desperation, uh, we came up with a different model, a different paradigm, a different way of thinking. Using the crisis uh, mindset, we were able to advance a program called Project Room Key that started quite literally right here, uh, right behind you uh, in the motel you see. Uh, it was the first one of what became thousands and thousands of units that we master leased uh, during the depths of the pandemic to get people off the streets, particularly those that are cohorted during the time, early time of the pandemic uh, and encampments and the like, uh, and to maintain some stability. That program became a national model in and of itself, but what it initiate, initiated was a different mindset of thinking that if we can lease these units, why can't we just buy these units? And room key made way for the home key model. Working with chair of the budget committee, Senator Skinner and others, we advanced a three and a half billion dollar commitment. And in just three and a half years, we now have procured, purchased over 15,000 new permanent hotel and motel rooms and have advanced investments to convert other office spaces and new modular construction. A little bit more on that in a moment. Today we're announcing, as was noted, a $99 million additional investment. There's still additional resources left, to be precise, $138 million left of the three and a half billion after the 99 million is distributed today in six counties in the state of California, including here in Alameda County, uh, all the way down San Diego, LA, Fresno, and as was referenced, Yuba City. Uh, those projects, those six additional projects will get this portfolio a little closer to 15,500 permanent units here in the state. The program you see behind me, this will be up and operational within 12 months. There's the guy responsible. He's, I'm stress testing the 12 months. Uh, this is a 104 unit uh, motel. It's not what we're announcing today, however. What we're announcing today uh, is offsite uh, downtown Oakland, an additional 41 unit uh, project, $14.3 million. What's interesting about this, and it goes to supervisors' point, and I think more broadly, our generic broad concern, and that is it's not just a capital investment. Uh, we need to seed some of the operational supports so we provide a sense of community and place and continuity and confidence for neighbors that this is an added value. This is not a burden for the community. So that project we're announcing today here in Oakland is 14.3, not just 12.3, that's the capital. The $2 million is for ongoing operating investments to help support the whole person model to support the issues that underlie uh, why these units are needed in the first place. So that's the advancement, that's the announcement here today. Now you say, well, you only got $138 million left. You know, it's nice you've been able to get 71 or so thousand people off the streets, but it's not good enough. I drive around, I see what I see, everybody's angry about it, I understand. And that's why it's absolutely critical that people support Proposition 1. Because Proposition 1, it's on the ballot, in just a matter of weeks, provides an additional $2 billion specifically to continue the success of this program, to continue the streamlining reforms that are part of this program that allow us to site buildings like this in real time, to continue to do more, yes, with less, $203,000 per key. That's the cost of the state's investment in this program. So we're fast-tracking the time to delivery, we're taking existing properties, converting them, and we're doing it at a cost the likes of which we've never been able uh, to advance in our state's history. So we want to replicate success. We want to move away from the areas where we're falling short. And so what Proposition 1 does, it provides minimum $2 billion. And I say minimum because it also seeds $1 billion ongoing each and every year 
for housing at all types of all stripes in the reform of the Mental Health Services Act. I won't go into too much detail, but all I can say is a no-brainer to support Proposition 1 if you care about the issue of homelessness, housing, and mental health. And I don't know which order that is, but I would imagine that's in your top three in terms of your issues, my issues, our issues uh, in the state of California. The most significant opportunity to put a dent at the scale and scope that is needed of this crisis, Proposition 1, on the March ballot, and to do it without replicating failure, instead replicating success, and not having to start something up, but to keep the directional momentum so we're moving with speed scale and the scope that this crisis deserves. So I'm really proud of this. I'm proud of the partnerships, and, and that's the final point I'll make. This is all about partnerships. It's about leveraging private sector dollars, private dollars here that would never have materialized, that came from philanthropy. Public money from the city, public money from the counties, all of this packaged together with a different sense of intentionality and focus uh, that is needed at this moment. Let me just close on this. I was once again uh, down the road cleaning up some, you know, old encampment site. Uh, that's why I'm dressed so well, so gubernatorially, if that's a word, <laughs> uh, because I said I'd keep coming back as it relates to trying to address these vexing issues. We put $1.1 billion to clean California. Nancy Skinner knows this well. The most the state ever invested was $90 million to clean the streets, sidewalks, entrances and exits, and underpasses in this state. $1.1 billion to beautify. And you've seen that on the freeway. You'll see some of the old encampments, and you'll see some new fencing we put up, some new trees, uh, some beautification efforts. Uh, I want folks to know out here we weren't one and done when we announced 120 CHP officers, and nor were we naive that that somehow is just a strategy for community revitalization. That's a short-term strategy to address the crisis at hand, and that's the crisis of confidence as it relates to crime on the streets and sidewalks. But we need to be here for the medium and long term, and that's to address these underlying issues and to make long-term investments. That's what Home Key is about, unprecedented long-term investments to address these systemic issues, ongoing money that you will be a big beneficiary of if Proposition 1 passes in particular and investments that we have committed as a state to flood the zone in terms of cleaning and greening uh, parts of Oakland and other parts of the East Bay more broadly defined. We still have 72 CHP officers, so that's the new baseline. We'll still be doing unannounced surges, mark my word, I've already worked on the dates and times, but we're not going to make that public till after the fact. You saw the fruits of this first effort. And, and with respect, I don't have a lot of respect for someone that smashes and grabs, runs into a store. I don't care if it's Apple or neighborhood store, and takes 50 plus cell phones. By the way, that guy in Emeryville was arrested by the CHP operation. He needs to be held to account. I, I just, you know, it's wrong. It's violent. People are scared. And so I want to address those issues as we address these underlying issues at the same time. So Oakland, please mark my words, understand this. I'm coming back again next week. There'll be more announcements. I will come back the week after with still more announcements. I am not going away. This is not a passing interest to me. This is a long-term commitment. I love this city. I love this county. I love this region. I love my state. But all of us have a state of mind where we've had it in terms of some of the conditions that persist. And all of us need to be held to a higher level of accountability, every single one of us. The reason I'm out here is I recognize my role in relationship to accountability, and that's why I'm back out on the streets, not just dialing it in from some fancy building with a dome up in Sacramento. All of us at all levels of government, and dare I say, citizens of this region state. Don't give in to cynicism. Don't give in to all the negativity. Let's all do our part. Volunteer, restore a sense of spirit and pride. We cannot legislate spirit and pride. That does not come from a Senate bill or an Assembly bill. 
That comes from people doing more and doing better and recognizing our fate is tied to the fate of all of us. And so I'm here uh, with pride, grateful of the remarkable partnership that has helped advance this project and the projects we're announcing throughout the state and notably here in Oakland with hope and expectation that we can create a movement uh, and start focusing on what's right with this region, not just what's wrong, because what's right is in abundance as well, and it's in front of each and every one of us each and every day, and we want to build on that. So with that, we're here uh, to answer any questions. So good morning, uh, everybody. Governor Newsom, I'm Anton Hassan with ABC 7 News. Um, Help us understand, why does it take 12 months to get a place like this operational? Um, it seems like it could be ready to go. Um, second question, there's been a lot of focus on Oakland recently with the CHP and whatnot. Are you, is there some concerns with Oakland, things that aren't being done that you think the city's not able to handle that you're out here? And then real quick, uh, the recall against Mayor Tao and DA Price, any concerns? Well, I'm not getting on that. that. But look, uh, Oakland and Bakersfield saw an increase in crime. We saw crime broadly decline all across the state of California. That's why I'm here. I want to address that. I want to own that. We've got re to respond to that. Can't deny that. It's real. And I've uh, met with too many people that have been directly impacted, members of my staff directly impacted by it. Small businesses put everything on the line lost it, losing confidence. There's high profile businesses, one just down the block, leaving, um, doing everything we can, try to convince them to invest someplace else in Oakland, um, doing our best to, to address holistically and systemically all of these issues, not just situationally, though the situation I think requires a pattern interrupt, and that's what we did last week, and that's what we'll continue to do over the course of the next few weeks. 12 months is remarkable, trust me. Are you, it's the right question. How are you doing it so fast? I agree with you. Uh, I mean, these things usually take years and years and years. And so this thing's being remodeled. It's been redone, kitchenette. So you're taking an old motel uh, that doesn't have a kitchenette, that doesn't have a component that's permanent, uh, that's more transitional, transactional in terms of those that come in and come out. And so this is, uh, this is about putting those kitchenettes, remodeling those units. It's about a lot of electrical upgrades, a lot of plumbing upgrades. Uh, but the fact that we have the streamlining legislation that's part of this home key model allows it to actually happen. And so I'm very excited about uh, uh, being back here in 11 months uh, to, to celebrate this. Thanks. Hi, Governor. Thanks for taking our questions. I'm Dustin Gardner from Politico. Um, speaking of the CHP in Oakland, I'm curious, you know, how you would describe success with that deployment. What are you expecting, say, six months down the road? What realistically are you expecting? Well, that's the right question. Um, there's no substitute for localism. As a former mayor, um, CHP has limited scope and roles. CHP is not walking the beat in, in, in Oakland or Alameda. You've got county sheriff's office. You've got uh, Oakland Police Department. You've got other community builders that are out and about. Uh, so this was never conceived as a permanent uh, uh, strategy uh, to address. It's supportive and it's supposed to enliven. It's supposed to encourage. It's supposed to distill a sense of well-being. We did a little of this, by the way, in San Francisco and I can't tell you, I was with a number of beat officers when I was walking there and Apex said, and I, I was really touched by this, that thank you for doing it because you have our backs. They felt like we had their back. Uh, there are a lot of CHP uh, members uh, that are from Oakland that said, thank you for coming back to my town. I'm glad I'm here. Uh, and so it's about partnership, and it's like it's about letting folks know we're watching and we care. Uh, so that's what we want to jumpstart. Uh, the arrests are important. I, I get that because there needs to be accountability. We took guns off the street. We took meth off the street. You had guys running around that were drunk uh, and high that shouldn't have been on there that could put kids at risk in the streets and sidewalks. And we arrested the guy that was all over the news. I hope you all are running like you were those front, those streaming of that chaos in that store. I hope you're running the fact he was arrested because people, I think, need to know that because otherwise they feel like no one cares, no one's paying attention. So all that's important, but it's not to sup supplement, uh, rather it's not to uh, eliminate uh, that local support and, and move in to substitute it. It's to help 
uh, inspire more and, uh, and, to, and to supplement it for the period of time. Um, one last question on this point. Um, is there an expiration date for how long the state can be here? How long do you well, anticipate? I, I'm, I'm doing my best. We, not surprisingly, success leaves some clues. And unsurprisingly, we were asked to now do more in many other parts of the state. I just, with the remarkable support of the legislature, we just procured, or rather, cures the wrong word, uh, we, we got budget support to increase our academy classes from CHP. And, uh, and we're hiring 1,000 new CHP officers. We have a lot of work to do to get our ranks back up, uh, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, but we can't do everything for everybody all the time. And so I, I don't want to overpromise, but 70 went from the surge. We said it was going to be a surge, which is by definition not permanent. Uh, and then we have now 72 uh, as a new baseline. And then we're going to be running these operations. And by the way, building partnership and capacity, working with the FBI, working uh, with Homeland Security. In fact, maybe as I speak, I don't know what time they're having the press conference, but Attorney General Bonta uh, is announcing a major operation, uh, a retail theft operation that was connected to 21 counties, including Alameda County, where they found millions and millions of dollars in merchandise. These folks were reselling that merchandise on well-known platform, Amazon, among others. And this is all part and parcel of the work that we continue to do, the work we have been doing, the reason we've invested hundreds of millions of dollars into vertical prosecution and grants uh, and investigations. The reason I um, want to help support uh, the county here with some JAGs uh, that do a remarkable job. These are our National Guards men and women that do a lot of intelligence gathering. Uh, that are deeply involved in a number of task forces uh, that can offer insight, including linguistics work, which is actually very important. Some senior members of that uh, and, uh, and others that will help support some of the ongoing operations, build more partnerships with the state DOJ, which uh, Attorney General Bonta will speak more, of, uh, more to over the course of the next few weeks uh, to help the county in terms of accountability as well. And so all these are just broader strategies, broader efforts, uh, but uh, you should expect other parts of the East Bay to benefit is the long-winded answer to your question, uh, not just Oakland, uh, because a lot of this is all connected as well. Uh, hi, Governor Joe Garofoli of the San Francisco Chronicle. Um, a lot of business owners here, have, have restaurant owners, hundreds of them have signed a petition, I think you've seen it, and they've said, we want Oakland, we want a, a state of emergency uh, declared in Oakland. What would the value of that be? Sorry, sorry. I have a second question too about uh, unrelated. Uh, what do you think of uh, Senator Weiner's uh, recent bill to uh, suspend uh, CEQA in downtown San Francisco? I don't know enough about the detail of that bill. I think what is tomorrow I get to be regaled with the last day of bill. Uh, today, it's today actually. Yes, yes. So maybe that's a new one. There's going to be 2,000 bills. So. Don't get me asking their details about bills I haven't read yet. What I about the state that. of emergency? What what um, value? Well, I'm, I'm operating under that basis. I don't. I mean, state of look. There's a lot. Of, I, I, I don't know if that's they're requesting some local state of emergency, some regional Lo local state, state of emergency, state of emergency yeah. in Oakland. I'll, I'll leave that to e each city, each county, each jurisdiction has different definitions as it relates to a, a, a state of emergency. Um, I think what often is the it, sometimes it's just it's it's a statement of frustration. It's a statement of intent. It's uh, sometimes it could have the form and substance of fog. Uh, think through that statement. Uh, sometimes it means something. Uh, for example, when there's a wildfire, a drought, uh, emergency, or there's a declaration of emergency as it relates to uh, major disaster decks that we get from FEMA and others. Uh, it means something very different in that light. So uh, I, in terms of the work we're doing in Oakland, I, I respect and need a, a petition to know we need to do some work to support local government here and we're doing that and uh, I'm grateful for those small businessmen and women because we spend time with them listen to them and um, uh, their concern is shared and uh, it's mine as well and with all this the the, uh, the stuff that the state's doing here do you feel that Oakland's in a, almost a state of receivership we can with uh, all the stuff I'll leave that no I we're, we're in a state of partnership and stewardship uh, uh, very different. Uh, hi there, Governor. Ethan Varian with the Bay Area News Group. Um, 
You mentioned uh, Project Roomkey earlier. I'm sure you're aware Cal OES is concerned local governments could be out some $300 million in FEMA reimbursements for Project Home Key, or Room Key. Forgive me? Room key, yeah. yeah, right. And this comes at a time, of course, local governments are staring down budget deficits yeah. this year. So I'm how are you going make to sure DC. they get there? Going okay. to DC. All right. Now you know my agenda next week. What's that uh, going to look like? When you get well, there? I don't know. We'll see. I'll let you know after. The agenda is pretty clear. I have a number of meetings. Uh, we're going to we're going to try to so fix this one quickly. Uh, so that's uh, I can assure you, uh, one of a number of our agenda items with the White House and the administration, not just FEMA. Real quick, related to that, I've spoken to a lot of local officials who really appreciate Project Home Key for getting these sites up and running real quickly and at a lower cost, but there's, of course, some concern about ongoing funding, a uh, dedicated source of ongoing funding to keep these sites running well into the future, which I'm sure is your goal. So how do we make sure look, that these sites stay running? I, look, <laughs> the state, is, state can't do everything for everybody, not just as well as CHP, but generally. I was, look, I was a former county supervisor. We made unprecedented investments in ongoing. We, it's what do you prioritize? What, it, what is the top issue in your city or community? And are you going to prioritize that for the long haul? We're jump starting with unprecedented investments, but you know we've got a lot of other priorities. So I want to see those partnerships. I want to see that baton carried in cities and counties supporting some of those efforts. What I have seen, I've seen some counties, not saying Alameda, I'm not, that have said, thank you, state of California, you need to do more as they're doing less. That was never the intention, ever. Uh, and so I wanna, I wanna hold everybody accountable to addressing the issue that defines so much of people's frustration. And I'll be talking a little bit more about that in the state of the state um, in a few weeks uh, because uh, that's something we're keeping an eye on. But. Uh, Prop one, perhaps the best answer to that question. One billion dollars ongoing, roughly, plus or minus, each year dedicated to addressing housing and related underlying issues. So that's the game changer, and that should uh, assuage some of that concern in a very meaningful and impactful way. Thanks, Governor. Hi, Governor. Chris Ancarlo with KCBS. And a uh, question has to do with public safety, but uh, looking a little bit further in the East Bay, after the surge was announced and happened here in Oakland, uh, there was some consternation amongst local leaders in Antioch yeah. that they had asked for a surge of CHP there. We have seen they have my cell phone Glazer. is the answer to your question. <laughs> yes, we're working with them to see what's possible. This is exactly what I was previewing before, and it's not just Antioch, others uh, that, uh, you know, Southern California, elsewhere across the state. We have joint operations with CHP all throughout the state of California. Obviously, we announced uh, a few months ago, last year actually, uh, well over a year ago, forgive me, in San Francisco, some of these operations. And so we've been doing a lot of work in partnership with communities all around the state. And there are many outstanding requests, and I acknowledge that. And we're doing what we can to accommodate, but still do the baseline work that needs to be done at CHP to keep you safe out there uh, with their day job out in the freeways. Uh, and all the major thoroughfares in the state. Uh, what, what I've heard from them is that close to half their police force is obviously not, not working right now because of the racist police text uh, message I'm, scandal. I may come back as a candidate for mayor uh, of some of these communities. I, I know. Uh, hey, I, I, I look, <laughs> you know, that's got to be addressed, doesn't it? Uh, they've got addressed. Why is that the case? It's a big issue. Now, they had some unique, specific issues you've talked a lot about and it's been written a lot about. And so they, in particular, uh, have uh, more challenges to, to get that force back up. But you're seeing that all across the country, not just all across this state. Uh, but I recognize how acute it is there. That's why I say I'm sensitive uh, to their request and, and just know we are actively working with them uh, to address their concerns. And I may have previewed uh, now I could be more explicit that these operations will have a more regional uh, through line and uh, and I could imagine would be among those that will benefit from it. Governor Valina Jones with NBC Bay Area. We've talked a lot about 
public safety and the CHP, you bringing in the CHP here to Oakland and throughout Alameda County. A lot of people have praised those efforts, but there has been criticism as well. How would you respond to people's criticism who says this isn't really addressing the root cause and only adding to mass incarceration? Well, I want to point them to the unprecedented historic investments into addressing the issues of ignorance, poverty, and disease that have been advanced by uh, the, the senator and this administration. I don't know where I could begin at the beginning. I could talk about the unprecedented work we're doing uh, as it relates to prenatal care, the unprecedented investments into this county as it relates to creating a brand new grade, pre-K for all, to deal with the underlying issues, to begin at the beginning, to address the anxiety, the work we're doing to create a, a, a workforce um, and ongoing work we have to do to make sure they're appropriately paid to address unprecedented investments in child care. I could point to the unprecedented investments in after school for all and summer school for all, the community school model, the fact that every kindergartner in the state of California two years ago, 3.4 million of them, got close to $2 billion in child savings accounts. Talk about beginning at the beginning. Free community college, unprecedented homeless investments, housing investments, mental health investments, investments in infrastructure at the next level. I can continue. So you get the thrust. Uh, and by the way, what we did is we overlaid that, and I hope those same folks will take a look. Uh, and we've actually mapped out those specific investments. Uh, so Alameda and Oakland uh, uh, know exactly uh, how they've benefited from the state's renewed investments in addressing these larger systemic issues. Sure. And one more question when it comes to safety, but specifically when we talk about home key, are, is there safety measures being taken to ensure the safety of these locations, specifically in areas like the Hagenberger Corridor, which we've already talked about, has seen um, needed investments? Well, you may see me there next, um, well aware. Uh, yes, these, all of these component parts have a service component and contracts that have a safety component. Uh, and considerations, some more robust than others, depending on the community needs. I think the supervisor was wise to immediately point out uh, his anxiety and concern around that and his leadership in that space. And uh, since I've talked so much, um, perhaps the supervisor could talk about that in relation to <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, and the council. Thanks. Just just this week on Wednesday, we had a, a press event with uh, Mayor uh, Jesse Arguin around a public safety corridor that a stretch from Contra Costa County down to Santa Clara County because of the concentration of, you know, lawlessness here, not just in Oakland, but elsewhere. And um, this is the council person's district and Treva was heading that up. So maybe Treva could, could speak bit more to that, but we are looking at that for sure, for certain, but it's gotta be a collective effort. Yeah, we're leveraging every resource that we can with our city, our county, our state, and our federal partners, particularly in this area. You, you've heard the story, you've shared the story, and that regional public safety task force that we launched publicly this week is gonna expand on everything that we've been building on behind the scenes and bringing that work and that funding and that investment, that shared strategy, those shared technology tools, that real-time regional crime operation um, strategy to make sure that this area has that increased investment and intentional uh, support and ongoing sustained support as you've heard from our governor. And, and real, real quickly, we have measure W that the voters passed in Alameda County uh, that we're being challenged on, but that we're raising over $150 million annually. It's in escrow. We'll be, we probably have close to 400 million in that account. Once we win that lawsuit, we can use that resources for services for um, marginal populations. Also, I was mentioning I'm on the Bay Area Housing Finance Authority uh, for the region. We're looking to put a, a 10 to $20 billion bond on the ballot in November that will also complement Prop 1, and that's unprecedented as well. So we're looking at all the things you're raising questions about. Back to the governor. Oh, thank you. That's, that's thank you, governor. Listeners. Thank you, Governor. Mike Lindine with Fox National. I want to change topics and get your reaction on uh, national politics. Uh, the special counsel report that came out last week against for President Biden, it had, quote, uh, he is a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. What do you think of this? And then also for uh, the 2024 election, uh, does 81-year-old does President Biden have a better chance of beating Donald Trump than you 
<laughs> and do you disagree with 86% of Americans who think he's too old to run? Okay. Well, I, I, I appreciate uh, the question and the framing. But um, I also appreciate my president and, uh, and his performance. Um, I'm a little old-fashioned. I care about results. I care about governing. Uh, I care about people that deliver. Uh, and I, I, I care about people's record and, uh, and what President Biden has accomplished in just three years um, is the most significant list of accomplishments in my lifetime. And I don't say that lightly, I say that knowingly, because we're quite literally here as a beneficiary of those accomplishments. The Room Key Home Key model was inspired by the partnerships that we formed with this administration. The remarkable investments uh, in the infrastructure bill, the remarkable investments, Chips and Science Act, the remarkable and unprecedented investments across a spectrum, including Safer Communities Act, and new investments in mental health and gun safety, the work he's done to eliminate debt uh, for so many uh, that are burdened with student loans. I can go on and on, the work he's done in terms of his alliance management. NATO is stronger and it's larger than it's been. Russia's weaker than they've ever been. The work he did uh, as it relates to strengthening our alliances, including perhaps uh, some of the most, uh, most consequential as it relates to uh, the partnerships now and the new strategic alliances with uh, Japan and South Korea in relationship to what's going on around the globe. So I'm very proud of this president and I'm very enthusiastic to be out there on the campaign trail for him. Uh, when asked, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, and I say that enthusiastically regardless of time of life. Uh, and uh, I am very, very proud to be a Democrat and proud to support his reelection. And uh, just th that first part, what's your reaction to the special counsel report? I haven't read the special counsel report in detail. I know the president's reaction to it. It's been quite pointed and vocal uh, in terms of expressing his own uh, opinion about it. But I haven't taken the time to read it. I spent a little more time reviewing the contract on the 104 units here uh, for this new home key program. Yeah. Hi, Governor. This is reporter Flora from Singtel Daily. So I want to ask you, you just been to China. How you come on that trip and mm -hmm. how you, what do you can uh, take from, from the trip to the local California Asian community, especially now is the Chinese Lunar New Year and in your new year, what anything you want to share to the community? Well, I just all best wishes and prosperity, and uh, I was honored to be back in China. Uh, it's, I'm not, it's not lost on me, should be lost on anybody, um, where we are, the greater Bay Area. Um, you know, I come from San Francisco, we're the first and largest Chinatown in the United States. We're a gateway to Asia. Um, you know, our history, proud past, has been very connected uh, to the contributions of people. Uh, throughout Asia, but particularly China. We were the first uh, to establish a relationship with China in the United States, San Francisco and Shanghai. It was there the 25th anniversary of the Shanghai Sister City with then uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein celebrating uh, our commonality, our shared fate and future, um, and uh, had the opportunity to express uh, not only that to President Xi, among others, in my visit to China, but also uh, to recognize we have strategic red lines that we also have to manage as it relates to our relationship going forward. But one thing uh, I think is important for all of us to manage, and that's to recognize that we're all in this together. Uh, I said it to the president, I said it to others, divorce is not an option. And uh, one of the points of pride, as always, being a San Franciscan at birth, being a Californian, uh, and being governor of this state, as I represent the most diverse state and the world's most diverse democracy. And at our best, uh, we're living in prospering together across every conceivable difference. And uh, what I hate more than anything else is hate. <laughs> and uh, uh, to see the anti-Asian hate we experienced over the course of the last number of years uh, is disgraceful, and it needs to be called out. Um, and, uh, and so uh, I was also proud to try to reinvigorate the people-to-people -people relationships between our two countries. And I think in the spirit of the new year, uh, it's spirit of renewal and rebirth and reinvigoration as it relates to our sub-national role as the fifth largest economy in the world, California, in relationship to building stronger relations around the globe, but particularly in mainland China. So 
Uh, Happy New Year. Zuk da ga, sun tai ging hong, gong fei, hong hong hei, na choi. And that concludes today's press conference. Thank you very much. Thanks. strengthen uh, our zero retail theft laws. I put a package in front of the legislature. Uh, I think the issues around clarifying the intent, uh, particularly as it relates to stacking of misdemeanors, uh, as it relates to being able to prosecute for crimes uh, that are not witnessed, uh, but clearly crimes that have occurred, are important reforms, and we are uh, seeking those reforms in partnership with the legislature. I was pleased the speaker yesterday announced uh, uh, his support uh, of a package of reforms, so we're working closely with them. As it relates to the issue of thresholds, California has the tough, tenth toughest felony thresholds in the United States of America. I'll repeat that. California has the tenth toughest felony thresholds in the United States of America. Two times tougher than states like Texas, tougher than states like Alabama, a lot of these other red states. So the felony threshold is a separate issue, which so often is conflated with 47. But these, these smash and grab, organized retail theft operations, that's completely separate and independent uh, from Proposition 47.